Okay, welcome back everybody. So I want to show you something um, that I learned a few years ago when I was observing uh, another group of buyers during a wholesale appointment at Ring Jacket. Like we were sitting at our table taking care of our buying and there was a older group of Japanese buyers, um, clearly very experienced like industry vet type guys. And uh, they showed up with this little stack of coins and we were watching them and we were like, I wonder what that stack of coins is for. And every time they made a purchase, they would put a coin down. And what it represented is uh, that was their budget. They had 10 coins, and so they had to buy 10 things. Not one more, not one less. They had to use up those 10 coins. And so I thought, well, let's apply that to what we're doing here, right? Because I think it's, it's good discipline to, to be able to say, I need to walk away from this with no more than this number, but preferably as close to this number as possible, right? So like today, I think I want to walk away with single-breasted jackets, times three, right? Three single-breasted jackets, one double-breasted jacket, two single-breasted suits, one double-breasted suit, and then two casual pieces. And then I left one last coin for like, if there's something that I just have to have, right? That'll be what that last coin is used for. So this is 10. And I remember when we originally started filming this, I was thinking, oh, this should end up being somewhere around four to eight. Um, so I'm going to make sure I don't use up all these coins, but I think this will at least help me structure my thoughts a little bit more. Alrighty, so let's put some coins down. So we'll start with the really easy ones. This would be a single-breasted sport coat for me. Like it's a little bit dressier than everything else because the texture is not as fuzzy um, and the color is a little bit more muted, you know, and you could wear this a lot of different ways. I feel like if I had, say, a kind of more formal occasion in the evening, I could get away with that. So that is easy single-breasted. Um, this one I would actually do as a safari jacket. I really, really enjoyed wearing my ivory safari jacket in linen all summer, and I kind of want to have um, like a winter equivalent. Not exactly the same, but something that like you would use in the same way, right? So this is like obviously very cream, but it has like a very winterish texture to it, and it has a lot of brown in it too, which makes it a lot more interesting. So there we go. That's the safari. So what sort of ammo do I have left? Two single-breasteds, one double-breast, and one more casual thing. For the double-breasted sport coat, because um, double-breasted sport coats are not something I get a lot, and I kind of want to get a little bit more into it, I think it'll be this. I think this, as a double-breasted sport coat, with metal buttons would be really interesting. Because I actually made myself a double-breasted sport coat in a very heavy gray fabric um, that I really liked, but I kind of didn't like the pocket placement in the end. So I think I can rectify that with the next version using this fabric. Let's go with that, double-breasted sport coat. Now, let's see. Two single-breasted coins left and one casual coin left. What are we gonna do? I think I need a little bit more color, and you know what? I wanna go back to that gray. I really like that gray. I think that could be really interesting as a, either a three pocket blues on or as a road jacket. I think that's where that needs to be. All right, so I still got this and this here. I might actually uh, just skip one of the single breasted sport coats. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I can still stay under eight pieces and maybe even less than that. So I think I'm gonna skip one of the single breast support coats and I'm gonna go with, see like this is far more in my comfort zone than this, right? This is really interesting because you have like this really dark brown and this black in this fabric with a red check. It's something that I've never seen before. This sort of different shades of blue is something I do all day long and I absolutely love it and I'm sure I would get a ton of use out of it. Um, Okay, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with this because, like I said, I like the red, I like the fact there's black in there. I also think that what is kind of missing from this single-breasted sport coat selection is some sort of dressy navy blazer. And um, we have some really good ones coming up in the Armory's Ready to Wear collection for the fall winter season. Um, so I might just grab one of the ready to wear ones to fill that particular gap. Alrighty, so there we go. Uh, that is our single-breasted sport coat and our double-breasted sport coat and our casual garments all set. Let's move on to suits. Okay, time to do the suits. So I budgeted 
one double breasted and two single breasted. And it seems like that actually makes my life a little harder and a little easier. I actually am now kind of feeling the regret of not having something in olive in the sport coat section. I did want an olive suit this season. I also wanted a pinstripe suit this season. I haven't really been that successful finding it, but then I actually stumbled on this in the Heritage Twist book by Stan Even. This is really good. This is actually exactly the sort of olive I was looking for. You know, like quite dark, almost a little dressy. It's got this great herringbone to it. Um, despite the fact that I didn't mark it earlier, I think that's the one for me. I have made single-breasted versions of olive suits before. I'm a little on the fence about whether it should be a single or double, so let's just leave that as a single and a double for now, and we'll, we'll finalize that choice in a second. Um, now we have this gray with the very bold check and the blue barathea. The blue barathea is something I've also wanted to do for a little while. Quite unusual. I'm still sort of on the fence also about the medium or the, like the lighter or the darker. Mm, I think, I think it'd be pretty fun to own this as a double. So let's do that. Double here. We'll keep the olive suit as a single breasted. And the big question is like whether I need this in my life or not, because maybe I can get away with it without this. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna pass on this. I think I would rather take it a little easy and uh, just do two suits. So that's great. Um, we originally wanted to do up to 10 pieces and we have settled on seven pieces. Uh, we're gonna look at some trousers next. So we're gonna take all the sport coats back out and just think about some trouser combinations that are really gonna work with it. And then we'll move on to shirts. The olive suit that I picked earlier, actually you could probably get away with using that as an odd trouser also. So I have in mind the fact that I also have a olive um, pair of trousers in the mix. If I can find that thing, there we go. Yeah, there we go, there it is. So that is the color we already have. And now let's find some trousers that are gonna work. This one, Drapper's Three Kings, they do a really great tricotine fabric. It's a cotton and wool mix, and there you go. It's right at the top. That is actually my pick for a winter weight, very light colored trouser cloth, right? Like you see, it's not sheer at all, but it's going to look really great, especially with stuff like this. Like tone on tone, that's gonna be sweet. And in fact, interestingly, it's like light and neutral enough, like it's not that yellow, it's more like an off-white, that it's even gonna work with something like this, with the gray, it's actually still quite interesting. Partly because the gray here has a little bit of warmth to it. The gray here is actually just a little bit yellow. So this is a for sure. Um, I ran out of little slips of paper, so let's, let's pretend like we're gonna remember all this. So this tricotine for sure. The other colors are not bad, but none of them are as good as this one for what we are working on here today. Now let's look for that gray trouser. So for the gray trouser, we could do a few different things, right? We could do a flannel trouser, which would be great. Um, I'm in Hong Kong. I'm not quite sure when I'll be back in New York. So maybe I will go easy on the flannel, but let's pull out anyway and have a look. Um, winter arrival is always a good place to start. I've made many pairs of trousers using winter arrival. It's really good, um, like has a beautiful drape. It's got enough weight to it and body to it that it just works. Um, the one thing I would say about this, it's a very clean finish, okay? So, so it matches well with something like this, but it's almost a little too refined for something like this or something like this, right? I want a little bit more texture. So given that's the case, let's bring back the Taylor and Lodge, um, I think it's called the Classic Book. Yes, the Classic Book. The Taylor and Lodge Classic Book has this, which has a little bit more of a milled finish See, so if you compare these two, like this is a little bit more appropriate. This is a little, this is pretty good. This might actually be what we're looking for, okay? We can also look at, let's have a look at the San Felice, Drapper San Felice flannels. 
Um, these are made by Vitaly Barberis Canonico. They do a really good flannel as well. Um, and let's see. The thing is, like, these are maybe a little fuzzier than I would like for Hong Kong. They do a slightly lighter weight, cleaner finish one like this. So this would be a worsted flannel. But even then, maybe a little too warm and heavy for Hong Kong. Let's have a look. Okay, there's their charcoal. Ooh, I do like that color though. See a little bit more dark, maybe even a little bit more neutral. This is a little bit lighter. And let's have a look at it with really like the jacket we were intending to see it with was this one. So that's not bad. That's a little bit better, but this is actually fine too. Okay. Um, just to make double sure, let's have a look at it with some of the other fabrics that we have on the table. That's not bad. I like that. With this trouser, I mean, sorry, with this jacketing, with the black in the check, I kind of like that better. But see, with, with the really dark charcoals, I always struggle a little bit to wear browns. This, I think I could get away with a dark brown, a dark brown suede. This one, it's getting so dark, I almost would prefer to be black, black green leather, in fact, would be really wonderful with that. So I'm, I'm a little on the fence, I'm a little on the fence. Um, no, you know what, at the end of the day, I think we can go with that. I think that's the one. Okay, so we got our cream, we got our gray. Um, I want to try and just round this all out, like, with um, some sort of tan, khaki sort of color in either corduroy or in cotton. Um, so given that's the case, there's a few places we can look. Um, the W. Bill book, Fine Irish Linens and Pure Cottons. There's some pretty good cottons at the back. I really like these heavyweight ones. I'm not sure if they're Hong Kong appropriate, but I definitely wear these in New York. And the lighter weight ones are good too. Let's see. I want, I want it to be a little yellower. See, that's a little closer to what I'm looking at. See the, see the difference between those two fabrics? I like that a little better, but these are a little, uh, yeah, these are a little bit light. These are 11 ounces, and for cotton, I'd like it to be maybe a little bit more than 11 ounces. This 13 and a half is, a uh, 13 and a half ounce is really good though. Okay, let's keep this aside. This is a maybe. Uh, let's have a look at Holland and Sherry's Corduroys and Moleskin book. Um, this book is split into narrow whale corduroys like this and wide whale corduroys like this. Um, the wide whale corduroys get really heavy. I mean, that's 22 and a half ounces. Um, the lightweight corduroys, however, are, oh, no, that's the medium weight. There, there are some lightweight ones in here that you have to kind of be careful of. The light ones are nine ounces, and I just find like they're a little too, they're a little too soft. Here we go, 14 ounce. 14 ounce cotton corduroy, that's pretty cool. That's okay. Ah, the purple is really nice, actually. Ah, I kind of want to do something with that purple. Ugh, keep it in mind. Okay. Ooh, the navy is beautiful. I wouldn't mind doing something with the navy as well. There's a part of me that wants to do a bright colored corduroy as well. You know, like one of my favorite people in the world, Gianluca Migliorotti, um, who is actually um, one of the founders of Pamela Trousers. He always wears these like strong colored trousers really, really well. And I kind of want to ape that style a little bit this season. Okay. I think that's the one. I think that is what we're looking for. Pretty decent match over there. Yeah, not bad over there too. Alrighty. So I think those are the choices we've made. So we've got this khaki corduroy here. We're also desperately in need of a larger table here at the armory. We've got this Taylor and Lodge charcoal in wool. And then we've got the Drapper's Tricotine. 
Plus, don't forget, we also have that olive trouser from earlier that will be part of a suit. Okay, that's it. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we can move on to shirts next. Um, you remember how I mentioned I had a little one token for a wild card? While I was looking through the corduroy book, I saw this, which um, reminds me of something that I saw like years and years and years ago on Savile Row. Like I remember this very distinctly. I was walking around in Mayfair, walking down Savile Row, and there was this gentleman dressed in a deep indigo blue corduroy suit. And it was kind of like this color. And you know what? I think I'm going to add this too. So I think that is going to be my wild card. Cool. All right. Let's look at some shirts. Given what I've picked so far, right, which is a combination of like fairly kind of rustic, fuzzy things um, in city-ish colors, not so much brown necessarily, uh, as well as certain things like that navy barathea that's very, very refined. I want to get a mixture of like poplins and oxfords. Okay, uh, pick some shirts. So let's start um, somewhat easy. 100 Hands, who makes our standard shirt as well as a beautiful handmade gold line shirt. Um, they have one fabric in particular that I really, really like. It's this one. So it's their washed brushed cotton. And this particular shade is interesting because it's just so yellow. And let me give you an example of like why that's important. All right, you look at this. What looks better? This one or this one? You see that? To me, this is definitely much more appropriate. Like nice blue in general, but especially when you start mixing it with these quite mm, brownish warm colors, like this yellow or blue is a real godsend. So definitely a yes for that. Got one shirt picked now. Um, let's have a look at the Ascot books. The Ascot books, a couple of really interesting stripes. Like I love that vintage style, very wide, very fine. Maybe not wintry enough though. So let me let's give that one a miss. Shortlisted sure, quite a few things. Um, I love this, just. Fine little micro stripe. I can imagine that with the blue Barathea. And even with, say, the gray sport coat. So let me show you what that might look like. That's the blue Barathea with that blue micro stripe. That's pretty cool. This actually works reasonably well. Yeah, I don't mind that too. So that is a number two for me. Um, I'm kind of in love with this. Really unusual. Definitely one of these like vintage fabrics that you only find at Ascot Chang. Gold and green stripe with a little gray stripe in the middle. Like really fun and weird and I'm kind of intending it to live with this specifically. I think this, and you find the right solid tie to tie that all together, um, could be very interesting. This is one of those outfits where like, you really need a lot, a lot of like, dense pattern together, but then if you can get all the right pieces together, it could be super interesting. And I was also thinking about this gray Oxford. This gray Oxford I like for, I mean, obviously stuff like navy, of course works, Actually, the Grey Oxford for me is with the olive. That's where it is destined to be. See that? Like that actually sits quite nicely together. So keep that in mind, olive and grey. It's a good choice. Okay, Grey Oxford and that green and gold stripe. And then um, we need a few textured Oxfords, right? Need a few textured Oxfords. These are beautiful, maybe a little, maybe a little too gauzy, right? They're like a little sheer. Great for the summer, but maybe not for the winter. So let's pass over those. Same with this one, sadly, much as I love it, but I will come back to those maybe if we ever do one of these segments again for spring, summer next year. Okay, so this book we will set aside for now. Finally, 
Um, I want to look at some Grande Rubinelli stuff. Grande Rubinelli, great mill, not so well known, but the quality is really, really good. And over here, I really want to do the ecru again, because the ecru just goes with everything on the table, right? Like you can imagine the ecru there with that. You can imagine the ecru there with that, you know? This one, when I was looking for shirts for it, was surprisingly, it was a, it was a little bit difficult. But the ecru at least is a step in the right direction. Uh, I liked these. I found these a little too fine. So we'll put these aside. Ditto for that. The ginghams are cool, but I couldn't find the right gingham. I just couldn't find, like they're all, they're all a little bit on the bright side. The dark green is pretty interesting. I could imagine it with this, for instance. Like, that's quite nice. But I think I can do without it. I actually prefer these, especially these two. I think the red is fabulous. Like that. And that blue, it's like just subtle and powdery enough to be unusual. Like normally blues in these sorts of stripes are much more solid, but that's like just kind of beautiful and delicate. I'm really into those two. So we got those two on the list. Okay, this I love. Super white, not too, not too even in the color and the blue and then white stripes. And I would put that with this. And then put a pair of blue jeans here. I think that'd be awesome. Like very sporty. I love that. And then a couple last things. Mm, there's another pale gray here that I like. But I think I like the I think I like the one that we got from Mascot a little bit better. So we can pass on this. And then they just have one really good pink, like pastel pink um, Oxford, which would sit well with quite a number of the things, right? Mm, it's a little bit risky, but I, I, I'm kind of curious to try it. Like it's, it's just about pale enough that you could put it together with something like the blue. It's kind of got that ivy feel, right? So a lot of those very ivy style patterns, like even the gray, um, could maybe do well with it, depending on what trousers you put with it. And similarly, like I could do the olive with the pink and then imagine that with a navy tie, especially like a navy knitted tie, something like that. It could be really good. So you know what, let's keep the pink in the mix. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe it, we finally finished. I think it's taken us two days to shoot this whole segment. I, I applaud you for your patience in listening to us this whole time. Um, so I'm gonna place an order for everything we see here, right? I'm gonna place an order for everything we see here. I'll probably finagle the details a little bit, um, but then when all this stuff arrives in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, um, we'll go through it again, and I would love to hear what people think. Alrighty, that's it for now, and thanks for watching.